So with the election uh, in the United States within pissing distance, um, I figured that I would go ahead and do this video. Um, I don't have a script for this. This is, well, I have notes, but I don't really have, I have bullet points, but I don't really have this situated as a script. So we're just going to, I'm just going to kind of give my thoughts on the whole situation. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while, but you know, there's just a lot of things going that have been going on with me personally, a lot of things that in a lot of factors within this election that keep changing. And quite frankly, I got to a point where I just wanted to wait until we got closer to November 5th. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder treason and plot. I can think of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Keep those those words in mind as we get closer to this election specifically. Um, I've been asked by several people, several comrades, who I think is going to win the election. And honestly, I don't know. I really could care less, to be real with you. I will admit a couple of things. Under Trump, being trans will probably be a, a bit more difficult, but it's not like, you know, Biden has done anything to help me. It's not like Kamala Cost is going to do anything to help me. You know, access to health care, even living in certain states, has become almost a death sentence under Biden, and they've done nothing to stop it. And let me just make this clear. It's not obviously just Biden. It's obviously Congress that does hold the power, and even with, you know, a fairly democratically controlled democratically controlled Senate, you know, even if they had both houses, they're not going to do anything. They, they, their priorities are elsewhere, and, they, and they've made that very clear. Under Kamala, there might be the potential for maybe a slight shift of the Supreme Court, you know, maybe even two, um, if Roberts decides to retire for some reason, but I doubt that's going to happen. You know, so there's a potential that, you know, we might see the court go back to a 5-4 conservative court. And uh, yeah, like I said, even a 5-4 liberal court, if we get lucky enough. But it's not, realistically, it's not going to change the outcome of a lot of the cases that are, you know, that have already been ruled on and, you know, that are still pending. Even if the Democrats take both the Senate and the House of Representatives, I highly doubt that transgender rights is gonna, or transgender health care is going to be high on that list, nor is stopping the genocide going on in Gaza and now Lebanon because they don't actually care about any of that. You know, they, they don't give a, a crap about health care in general in the United States. That you, if they did, we would have, you know, you know um, single-payer health care. We would have free affordable house. We would have affordable housing. We would have, you know, free afford or affordable you know, school, college tuition. We don't have any of that. They don't care because that's not profitable to them. And it's the same with trans people. They don't give a shit about us. You know, all these blue MAGA idiots that, you know, go around screaming, you know, 
uh, especially in the trans community, these trans blue MAGA idiots that go around screaming, it's like, well, we've got to vote, you know, for Kamala because, you know, tran because we have to think about the transgender community. They don't give a fuck about the transgender community. Like, I would really... <sighs> That's the one thing I really fucking hate about these trans liberals they don't seem to understand that neither party gives a shit. It's just that in the Democrats' case, they pretend or they just very quietly, you know, hide their tra their transphobia. So it's yeah. At the end of the so at the end of the day, yeah, you can go ahead and vote for these people if you want, but it's. You know, but, you know, have fun when four years down the line that we still haven't made, we've made little, if any, progress on transgender rights. You know, the only way trans liberation is going to come is through the barrel of a gun. I'm sorry. If you, um, now, <clears throat> if you want my honest opinion, I do think that. Kamala cost will probably squeak out a victory. I just think that it's really too close to call at this point. Um, but let me tell you the reason why I do believe that Kamala cost is going to squeak it out. Trump has had numerous opportunities to capitalize support for himself and for his campaign, specifically after the last two, you know, pew pew attempts. Um, but he has pissed so many of those opportunities away. One, because he's incompetent, and two, just because he's, well, frankly, an idiot. And it's because he's gone on this whole thing. He could have basically said, you know, the, you know, gone on the whole Palpatine thing of the attempt on my life has left me scarred and deformed. And, you know, it's just, you know, he could have gone on that whole, whole, you know, appeal to emotion thing. No, he just went straight to, oh, the Democrats tried to have me killed. Biden, the Biden administration wanted me dead. Kamala, you know, Kamala wanted me to, you know, tried to take me out. To those people that actually are like uh, undecided independent voters, people that aren't essentially brainwashed by the cult, they they're smarter than that. And they want something a little more nuanced, a little bit more, you know, a little something more articulate is an explanation. Hell, they would even take an appeal to emotion. The problem is, is that Trump can only rally to his base of brainless cultists. But when it comes to the general American you know, and, and let's be real, the, the general Americans, they're right wing, regardless of whether they claim to be liberal or conservative. It, it That doesn't matter. It's all a right wing ideology. One's just more moderate and the other is, you know, is fascist, is just psychotically fascist. But when it comes to the general American, he has trouble appealing to those masses because, again, A, he's incompetent, and B, he's an idiot. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that we deserve what we get under Trump, or we get to say, I told you so, if Kamala wins, and she ends up being just as bad, you know, if not worse, but I'm going to say this. I think those that vote for either one of these scumbags gets what they deserve. I think that you deserve to be mocked, you deserve to be shamed, you deserve to be disgraced. Because at the end of the day, whether you want to believe it or not, 
being voting liberal or conservative doesn't make a difference. You sided with fascists. You are no different than those fascists. And frankly, you should be regarded as a fascist. Especially those of you who had the nerve to call yourself leftists prior to this election. And believe me, I've actually lost friends who have claim to be leftists and then say, well, we've got to vote for, for Kamala because, well, we got to stop Trump. We, we've got to, we, you know, you've got to think of, you know, of yourself, you're, a, you're trans, you know, which, by the way, trying to pull that card on a trans woman, especially when you're cis, I know you think that that's you being a good ally, but no, that's kind of you being, uh, you know, kind of stereotyping me that just because I'm trans, I have to get out there and vote and or specifically get out there and vote for the specific person you want because somehow she's going to be different. Or, you know, because I'm a woman, I have to vote for a woman because something about feminism, which is laughable because let's be real here, she's not really a feminist. At least not in the very, you know, innate, organic sense of what feminism is meant to convey. Because if she was a true feminist, she would be out there very much supporting the trans community. But because the right-wing psychopaths on, you know, on the Trump side are railing against transgender people, and talking about, oh, she's gonna turn, you know, uh, turn everybody trans. She's gonna, you know, give you, you know, give you forced surgeries, and stuff like that. Notice she hasn't defended herself really, at least not consistently, and not, and not, very, you know, you know, basically said, yes, I support trans rights, but. No, that's not what we're trying to do. She hasn't said really anything about trans rights. There's, She has no policy on trans rights. And that, to me, is very telling. So, yeah, a lot of you that have been trying to say, well, you're trans, you should vote for, you know, Kamala, because, you know, if you don't, you know, your rights are going to be taken away and you're going to be... You know, and things are going to get, it, it, like, yeah, my rights are going to probably be curtailed, and it's going to be a little more difficult regardless. Under Trump, yeah, they probably will get a little bit worse. I, but I've been under the Trump presidency once, you know, and frankly, I don't want to be this person, but I'll survive, you know. And frankly, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, so. <laughs> the other thing is, too, is that it's just, as I said, it's, especially when I hear cis people saying this, it's, you know, that that's, comes off as very, again, as very stereotypy, you know, and I'm not trying to say that you're being transphobic, but I am saying that just because I'm trans doesn't mean that, you know, that doesn't mean I have to vote for, you know, somebody or really, frankly, vote at all. I think as a trans person, especially as a trans Marxist, I think I know what I want more than you do and what my community needs more than you do. And... I know that there's some non-binary people out there that will disagree with. I know there's trans people out there that are going to disagree with me on that. But quite frankly, just because we are trans does not mean that we have to vote for a certain person. There are alternatives. It just is the fact that those alternatives often, you know, involve radicalism and yes violence it's 
a sad situation, but doing nothing but voting to do this while throwing away our other morals, such as, you know, a genocide going on halfway around the world, which, let's be honest, is the big reason why a lot of these people are voting in the first place, because they don't honestly care. They're too concerned about their own first world, you know, privileges. Those are the people that I just... Yeah, those are the people that absolutely drive me nuts. Those are the people that... Uh, uh, th these are the people that are out there screaming about how they're leftists. But it's very obvious that they're not. And that's kind of what, you know, this whole... Uh, this whole little segment was... Of this video was meant to be about. I kind of... I digress. <laughs> The point is, is that I have lost a lot of friends and p people that I thought were comrades because, you know, they started screaming about, oh, well, we need to vote. No. That, that, then you're a liberal. You're not a leftist. You know. <laughs> Leftists don't vote for the two-party system. We don't vote for bourgeois candidates. Frankly, we shouldn't even be legitimizing the bourgeois democracy at all. But yet, you know, people do. So, for those of you that have the nerve to, say, you know, to, to say that we need to vote for Kamala, and call yourself a leftist, I spit on you. I curse your name. Dishonor on you. Dishonor on your cow. Dishonor on your family. You are a joke. You are a liberal who appropriates leftist idealism for your own benefit. And you do deserve nothing more than to face the fucking wall. And let me also say this, because I know the discourse that's going to play out after, you know, before the election, during the election, and after the election, regardless of how this circus act plays out. I don't want to hear shit from the liberals about how the leftists the tankies, the communists, the, these anti-Zionists, the pro-Palestinians, the Antifa, all that bullshit. You know, how we're the reason for Kamala Khan's losing, losing. You know, I don't want to hear shit about how leftists and tankies, you know, and the people that were screaming about the genocide, about how we lost you the election, but, you know, liberals are going to live. They're going to do that anyway. I also don't want to hear shit about illegal votes and voter fraud or how this election was rigged because Trump lost. But conservatives will anyway because they're idiots. MAGA or Blue MAGA? They're all the same. They're, they, there really is no difference between them. Idealistically, yes, they might have certain different opinions on certain different social issues. But when it comes down to it, they're all right wing. They're, they, you know, they, they are all the same. They are sociopathic, gaslighting, self-indulgent narcissists who give absolutely no fucking shits about, you know, about the rest of the world. That they're all, too, they're all American, you know, American-centric, Eurocentric, essentially, but American-centric. They, they care nothing except for the comforts of their own first world privilege. And 
we already knew that about MAGA, but the the liberals, these blue MAGA who keep screaming about how you need to vote or, you know, you know, we, we need to stop Trump or all they're doing is gaslighting you. This is they are engaging in what is quite literally sociopathic behavior. And they're only doing it for their own self-indulgence, because let's be honest, this has nothing to do with what others want, i.e., you know, when, like, when cis people, or even other trans people, try to say, oh, well, we, we need to vote for Kamala because, no, you're doing this for your own selfish, selfish interests. But yet, you claim that us that us not wanting to vote for for essentially two genociders is somehow us being selfish because we seem because we give a crap about other people in other parts of the world who are being ethnically targeted and murdered so, so let me get this straight. Selfishness, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna get the actual definition here. Uh, egocentrism, egomania, introversion, self-seeking, uh, being selfish, lacking consideration for others, concerned chiefly with one's own personal profit or pleasure. So me giving not wanting to vote because I care about Palestinians being being erased from the planet that that that's me being selfish. I don't think that word means what you think it means. In fact, it actually sounds to me by that very definition and Google is free, by the way. That is literally coming from Google. It sounds more to me like you're the selfish person. That the people wanting us to vote for, for the bourgeois democracy in general, but voting for Kamala Harris, that seems to me like that's self-serving, self-indulgent, um, that's serving your benefit and you know your your interests your you know for whatever situation that is sounds to me like you're the selfish one and you saying that we're the selfish people i believe that's also a little word called a projection which again is a very you know sociopathic narcissistic manipulative gaslighting behavior so you liberals really need to really need to take a good long hard look in the mirror because because essentially that that's what you are it doesn't matter who wins because at the end of the day we all lose that's how bourgeois democracy works. We the people, the proletariat, the working class, the lumpen, we all lose at the end of the day. The only one who actually wins is the bourgeoisie and the status quo. Those are the only people that win. Like, yay, congrats, your orange rapist pedophile uh, felon won. Terrific. Have fun never voting again. You still lose. Yay, your genocide-supporting cop won. Congrats. Hope you feel good about the blood that you now have on your hands from the tens of thousands of people that are now dead because of you. Palestinians, Gazans, Lebanese, and yes, even Jewish communities who were either targeted specifically or were collateral damage of the Zionist Weimacht. So yeah, congratulations. Hope hope you feel good about yourself. You still lose. 
the only people that I have even a modicum of respect for are the ones who either already have voted or will vote third party or voted simply for local initiatives. Because at least those people chose to vote with their conscience and can rightfully say that their hands are clean of the blood of the innocents. And if you didn't vote, you did what real leftists should be doing, what communists have been saying that we should be doing. And that's not paying legitimacy to the sham that is bourgeois democracy. Instead, we need to be out there uniting with each other. We need to, frankly, set our differences aside. Like, I get it. I don't get along with certain people myself, and I, and there's certain people that, that frankly, we shouldn't work with because they are, frankly, fascists. But, you know, we need to learn to, to mend relations. We need to learn to, to work together, and we need to learn to, to unite with one another. Because, frankly, we need, to, we need to organize. We need to radicalize. We need to educate people. My own grandmother doesn't even want to vote in this election because she has become aware that all of this is a crock of shit. This is a woman who has been a registered Republican her whole life. She's fairly moderate, you know, fairly moderate, you know, might even, some even might say pretty, li you know, say pretty liberal. But she has grown to detest her own party, both parties, really, and what, you know, what her party and what both parties have essentially become. She has become absolutely disgusted in how America and the people that run it are. And at 78 years old, she has even admitted that she doesn't even believe that her generation should be running things anymore. Even going so far as to insinuate that they are the ones that fucked things up for my generation and the generations after me. Hell, my mom doesn't even vote. She's voted one time, and that was literally for uh, when California legalized uh, cannabis. Neither one of them is voting in this election, and yet my mom and my grandmother are more self-aware and more selfless than a lot of you gaslighting, self-indulgent liberals. They understand and see the horrors that are being committed in this world, and they don't want to be part of it. And yet, because of that, they are more selfless than a lot of you people are. I would even say they're even more selfless than I am, and that's, you know, saying a lot coming from someone who's, you know, out here spouting communist propaganda, I guess you could, some people could say. Regardless of who wins, though, we're, we're going to, we got to move forward after November 5th, because time's not going to stop. The world's going to continue to march on. The genocide in Gaza and Lebanon is going to continue to, to, to go on. We got to move forward. We need to continue to educate the masses. We need to continue to resist. We need to continue to unite and organize and radicalize if we want to bring down the bourgeois state of the United States and the Zionist state of isn't real. I'm Red Pagan Nicole, and this has been Red Pagan Corner. Until next time. 
Thank you for watching. If you like news and politics from a leftist perspective, true crime, or informational videos on leftist philosophy and pagan belief practices, and would like to support the channel, please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. Even a few bucks really helps me out. All links are provided in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe, and share on various social media. Hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video. I put out content regularly, so you will always get quite a bang for your buck.